Hi guys, I'm here with my friend and training partner Richie Yip, and I want to show you something that works gi and no gi, and a serious mistake that a lot of people make with that technique. So, the arm drag from Butterfly Guard. We're here, I'm in Butterfly Guard, my feet are inside his knees, and we're grip fighting. If I manage to control his grip, I'm going to do a couple things at the same time. I'm going to move my foot to the outside, and I'm going to grab the back of his arm. Some people like to grab high, I like to grab the elbow. Grabbing somewhere is better than grabbing nowhere. So we're here. Now, I'm going to move my hips to the outside here, and I'm going to yank him forward. So it's speed, that looks something like this. Now, I can jump on his back, and hopefully take his back. I'm going to show that to you from the other side, and with the key. So now, with the gi, it's exactly the same technique. We're here, we're grip fighting. If I'm wearing the gi, it's going to be going for my lapel, it's going to be going for my legs. I've got to strip all these grips. I secure temporary control over the wrist. I go behind the elbow, and I drag. I can jump up on top of him. If I'm not feeling that athletic, another simple option is to grab the hip and move backwards. This collapses him on top of me. And then I can start working for the rear mount and for the various chokes here. So, that's the arm drag. Now there's a related technique called the lapel drag, which is almost exactly the same thing, you're just grabbing a different place, and from the name, I bet you can guess where it is. So we're here. A very, very common strategy for the guy facing the butterfly door is to control both of the legs, and then circle around to either side, basically pin my legs, and now work to my back, work to hold me inside control, this is a bad position. So him controlling my pant legs is a bad idea. You can just strip them, but there is a technique that you can do to use this to set him up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his lapel and I'm going to push a little bit. This straight arm buys me distance, buys me time. Now, I'm going to shift my hips to the side and I'm going to yank over here. See how his hands come forward? If he doesn't put his hands forward, he's going to face plant it. Now, I can work to the back, just as I did before. The big mistake that everybody makes here is they try and yank this way. You see how Richie's arms are preventing him from falling forward? I can pull here pretty hard, and he's not going anywhere. That's why the hip shift is so important. If Richie holds on here, and I move this way, his arms are no longer in front of him. Now when I pull, I'm going to pull gently, he holds on here, he's going to collapse. At the very worst, say he collapses, lets go, I don't take his back, but I end up on top. And you know what? Even if we're here, he lets go and he scrambles away. If he didn't pass my guard. Him controlling both your legs is an emergency because he's immobilized your legs, now he's going to run around. So if you push and then pull while moving your hips to the side, like this, the best case scenario, you take his back, worst case scenario, you disrupt his pass. Same thing with the arm drag. If I'm arm dragging him onto me, here, he can basically run me over. Yeah, maybe I can take his back, maybe not. But if I pull him, directly towards me, while moving out of the way, life is much, much better. So, remember to move the hips. Just yet another example of how jiu is all in the hips. Well, here's an example. You're moving your hips sideways. And that's how it might look at speed. Some options for you, the arm drag, lapel drag, you can use a gi and no gi.